Good morning. Welcome to the Maristem Minute. This morning, we have Brewer Blessett with us. He is our product research and development manager working with Maristem. We are excited to have a, him talk to us this morning. Brewer, we have a lot of planters running right now, and we're we're really getting to the point where we have to focus on beyond planting. Walk us through what's most important. Walk us through what you think about when you're thinking about the corn and, and soybean crop that's being put out in, in the fields today. Well, thank you, Melanie. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak this morning and, and I, I'll do just that. We got a couple of slides I'm gonna touch on. Um, and I, I, I think about the crop um, game as sort of like a game plan for a football game. Um, and, and I try to divide it up into individual blocks that we can augment the crop. Uh, so you can see here, I've got five stages, uh, everything from pregame to first quarter to fourth quarter. Um, within each one of those time frames, there's different things that we can augment. Um, the folks of today's group, uh, our discussion is really going to be on the Q2, the, the early vegetative type window. But just a brief touch, you know, the, the pregame is, is your strategy developing time frame. And that's anything from harvest of last year's crop to when we start this year's crop. Uh, th those are you know, fertility levels, placement of fertilizer, a big new one in biological activity. Um, and then, you know, your first quarter in, in a game, you know, you, you, you don't get too aggressive, um, but the purpose of it is to really get out on the field and get established. No different for crop production. Our goals there are to get a adequate stand in terms of total number of plants, uh, uh, really to have a, a uniform uh, a plant um, stand. And then uh, one thing that's often overlooked is, is that, that sort of transition from seed to a seedling. Um, so where that crop is actually reliant on what's actively in the seed from a traditional energy standpoint to where it's actually photosynthesizing and making its own energy. Um, and the quicker we can transition through that window is, is really important. Um, but uh, and, and I'm going to touch on Q2. I'm going to come back to that. But let me touch on Q3. So so the third quarter generally is to to, to um, that it's that reproductive time frame is to make the most of what you've done to date. And then Q4, the, the finish line, um, making, um, um, carrying it, carrying that crop all the way out to where you have maximum quality, maximum weight. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I think a lot of times that we, we miss on that window. We walk away from the crop too early. But let's go back to Q2. Uh, so once we've got our strategy in place, the planters have rolled, we've got everything right at that time. And the plants are coming up and they look uh, uniform, they look healthy. Um, and they're growing off. Um, the, the purpose of this window um, is to get bigger, faster, stronger, as fast as possible. Um, it, it doesn't matter whether you're on your fifth crop or you're on your 35th crop. Every year we have a finite window of time to, to, make, a, uh, to make yield. And um, there's a little bit of, of change in, in terms of how long that is, just year to year variation. But it, in a general rule, the, the amount of time we have from from last or uh, from frost free to first frost in the fall um, is, is the same amount of time year over year. And the more we can do in the quicker amount of time, particularly in this uh, early veg window is better. We focus on things like root and shoot growth. We focus on resource capture, whether that is um, water, nutrients, uh, sunlight's a big one. Um, so anything we can do to push those, uh, uh, capture those resources is, is important. Uh, I also have storage on here uh, because most plants are actively making more than they need for the growth at that point in terms of carbohydrates and proteins. Uh, and a lot of times they store that in some, uh, some semblance. Corn stores it in the stalk. That's why we have such a problem with uh, pathogens trying to attack the, uh, the, you know, in terms of stalk rots and crown rots. Um, and then the last piece is probably the biggest part of it, and that is yield preservation or yield potential preservation. One of my biggest pet peeves is to hear people talk about increasing yield potential. We don't increase yield potential. We maintain yield potential. Uh, so it, it, when you buy that bag of seed, it's got as much yield potential as it possibly could. Uh, and, and all season long, things are robbing away from that. So the bigger, the faster, the stronger the plant, uh, the more resources that we uh, capture, uh, the more sugar that we're generating and storing, 
Uh, that plant senses that as a very conducive environment and maintains as much yield potential as we can. Um, so on to my next slide, I'm going to briefly touch on um, and and it is nothing more than a nutrient accumulation chart where each row is a nutrient. Uh, you can see the NPK here. Uh, and then in the columns, uh, there's there's a phenological growth stage, so like V2, V4. There's actual the number of heat units established. And then this is actual calendar days. I try to break it into about three-week periods. That way we can kind of identify management timeframes. And then these numbers are actually the percentage of total that this is a corn slide, but that that corn crop needs a percent of that total that it needs within this window. And the darker the green in the cell, the higher the number. So you can see kind of periods of really strong draw uh, for that crop to be pulling from the soil. And the main thing I want to point out is, is this. We generally focus on NP and K the last 10 years, we're starting to add sulfur in there. And those percentages are, you know, 10, 11, 12%, not bad. I want to point out, though, that there's certain micronutrients that are even greater than that. Uh, iron and manganese, especially, they have really important roles in root growth and establishment, energy transfer, things like that. And those things are often overlooked, and you'll see why uh, as I move, move through that. Okay. So with regards to those micronutrients and nutrients in general, there's three real big points I'd like to make that are occurring during this early veg or second quarter type window that we're, we're looking ahead to and we're trying to plan around. One is it doesn't matter if that percentage I just displayed is fairly low. Um, again, we're transitioning from seed to seedling. As a general rule, a seed has about five days of micronutrients stored in it and about two days of micronutrients, but it doesn't matter on that percentage because the root is so small, there's a really high draw on there. So uh, it can be a low number, but a really big uh, uh, strain on that plant to accomplish that. And that only fades as that root zone gets bigger. Wonderful opportunity for um, increasing availability or pushing root growth. The second point I want to make is um, in terms of the total amount of the soil that is explored by roots, even at full physiological maturity. And you can see that these, these numbers are referenced, but 1% is, is a pretty good general number. Uh, up, I've seen some numbers up to 3, 3.5%. Um, but in any event, all of those are really low percentages of the total root zone. Uh, that that we're in that we are actually capturing um, immobile nutrients from the soil. Um, so most of your micronutrients, phosphorus, things like that, we're the, you know that they're not just there and rapidly being pulled out of the full root zone. They're just not. So again, uh, enzymatic activity, biological activity, nutrient placement, both in terms of physical placement and the time of placement. All of those are really good uh, means of, 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 of addressing that. And then finally, over here on the far right um, is, is a chart called Mulder's chart, uh, help, built to sort of help you understand nutrient antagonism or uh, synergism in the soils, if you will. But the point I'm trying to make, there's a lot of iterations of this chart, ones that are a lot more complex than this, but it, just in this chart, if you see a solid line between any two elements, that means there's antagonism. Um, and so calcium is probably the one that plays the least with others. Uh, you know, that kindergartner that can't get along with anybody on the playground. Second to that is probably phosphorus. Um, and, and if you think about how we manage phosphorus, particularly on a corn crop, but in most all of our crops, we're either applying pre-plant or at plant pretty aggressively with phosphorus. And, and if that phosphorus is... Um, is applied as plant available, immediately it's going to go undergo some soil interactions and start binding a lot of your micronutrients. So the more aggressively we manage phosphorus in the absence of, say, enzyme technology or biological activity, the, the probably there's more uh, impeding of micronutrient uptake and therefore, um, you know, availability within the plant. And most all your micronutrients are tied to photosynthesis directly or indirectly. And so there's a lot of downstream effects of that. I mean, in any event, there's really good opportunities um, 
as we are in this Q2 to really change the way these interactions, root growth, or the root demand is really uh, affecting our crop. So I go back to this slide, uh, back to what we can do. Um, I've got some products down here for, for the pregame in Q1, but but as I think about the Q2, where what we're trying to do is, is, is get very dominant plants out there, bigger, faster, stronger, greater root mass, greater um, leaf mass to capture sunlight. Um, I'm, I'm a big proponent on, uh, on PGRs. Um, I'm also an extremely big proponent on micronutrients at this time, leading into that rapid vegetative growth uh, and, and pushing photosynthesis to the max. Uh, and I also believe in a lot of these enzymes and biological activity at this time to help uh, keep the phosphorus free, but at the same time, help keep some of those micronutrients free in the soil as well. Yes. So Brewer, what I hear, what I'm hearing is it's super important to prime those soils, you know, to provide those micronutrients, make sure they're available early on. But as we enter this Q2, the quarter two stage, the plant get, can't get enough through the soil. So not only do, is it impactful to drive a huger root system, so much bigger root system, so starting to do that with, with the Revline hopper throttle, but then even reinforcing that with a stimulate or Revline component. But then every time you use a hormone, you know, you showed that sulfur, boron, and manganese are incredibly important in this uptake stage in Q2. So feeding that plant with those key micronutrients, providing them more, so bigger roots so they can take up more, but also feeding more through the tissue because there's not enough there in those soils to get them to the right stage. Is that, would that- Yeah, that's that's right? exactly right. When, when, when we say PGR uh, or, or, or growth hormone, that is just the signal, Melanie. Um, and, and, and the signal's only gonna last a brief little amount of time if you don't actually have the energy and the nutrients to help, um, I guess you say, back up that signal. So yeah, absolutely. They're wonderful pairing uh, options there. So when I look at those key components, it was really sulfur boron and manganese that I recognized on your chart. And so that's home stretch or home stretch ultra that fits that, that pass really nicely. A absolutely. Um, so, so, you know, each one of them, you know, sulfur is so tied into protein um, development and, and even tied back to some of your nitrogen metabolism. Uh, boron is, is, is great in cell walls, you know, um, and, and moving those sugars around. Uh, manganese, um, terribly important in a lot of photosynthetic uh, activities. Uh, and like you said, in the, in the root growth and development, all of these things, we know what's happening in the plant and we know sort of where these different nutrients tie into that. Uh, making sure they're available and making sure that that plant knows exactly what we're wanting it to do, when we want it to do it, um, can, can really lead to some great results in the crop. Excellent. Well, Brewer, we thank you for your time. There you have it. You have our first Maristem Minute. And we appreciate all the information you've provided, Brewer. So after these corn and soybeans emerge, we can continue to feed them. We can continue to grow stronger, healthier plants and drive towards high yield. Thank you.